The NFPA 70E says, before starting each job that involves exposure to electrical hazards, the employee in charge shall complete a job safety plan and conduct a job briefing with the employees involved. Two simple steps, completing a plan, then briefing the team on it. The maintenance manager has the technical and leadership skills to head up the planning process. But don't worry, they aren't flying solo during the planning phase. In fact, it's a requirement to include a qualified person in the project planning for the task being performed. Once the plan is developed, brief all employees who will be on the task. For certain projects, you can save time by doing the planning and briefing in the same meeting. Always document the procedures and highlight special circumstances for unforeseen hazards where workers might be subjected to. If there are any changes in the scope of the project, go back to the drawing board and pre-plan again. At every point in job planning and briefing, make sure you're clear on the project and the tasks it will take to get it done. For example, if Luke is planning to replace a 480 volt motor, he must include the process for controlling energy and creating an electrically safe work condition in the overall plan. He details each task required for creating an electrically safe work condition, along with the steps required to replace the motor. Once he's identified and laid out each task, the next step is to determine the hazards and risks associated with each one. Going back to our example from the intro, when Luke is creating an electrically safe work condition, he'll be checking for the absence of voltage. That will subject him to 480 volts and an arc flash hazard of seven calories per centimeter squared. There's a shock risk from coming into contact with a possible 480 volts and a risk of arc flash through a voltmeter or accidental contact between two phases with the same lead. Because of these risks, Luke must wear the correct shock and arc flash PPE when verifying the circuit is de-energized. The process for re-energizing the circuit should also be part of project planning, along with the documented communications plan prior to shutting down and re-energizing the circuit. When Luke operates the equipment for the first time after the shutdown, there's an increased likelihood of failure. This means while Luke is energizing the circuit, he's subjected to an arc flash value of 36 calories per centimeter squared. Again, he needs to suit up in the right arc flash PPE prior to operating the switch. Pre-job planning doesn't have to be difficult, especially if you've already done some of the work in your facility. If you've completed an arc flash study and task and equipment-based risk assessments, all you have to do is review the new task to make sure there aren't any additional hazards or any new protective measures required. Now let's move on to the after. Post-job documentation often gets overlooked. Once you complete a task, take the time to update any procedural documents if you found better methods. Also verify that the documentation you received from the qualified person has been filed in case of an audit. Remember, in the eyes of most insurance and government agencies, if it isn't documented, it didn't happen. If you've added or modified any existing circuits, note it on the schematics and require an update to the arc flash study. This step is crucial because unlabeled equipment is very dangerous and making changes to electrical infrastructure is likely to change arc flash values. Keep your workers safe by providing accurate values for PPE selection. If you are taking this training alongside an EBSCO arc flash study, you have access to any updates and changes over the next five years. Please be sure to use them. EBSCO, electrical power and safety company. Safety, diligence, collaboration.